In today's video, we're checking out the brand new free slicing engine from Prusa Research called Prusa Control. Welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So this is Prusa Control. It's still in beta, and the version I have is 0.9.2 uh, underscore 297. So still very early days for this slicer. But a few things to note, Prusa Research has been pushing uh, slice slicer which is slice 3r or slick 3r as Tom likes to call it for some time and making it easy to use with their own Prusa version but I think Joseph did notice that even with those tweaks slicer was still not very user friendly so this is an attempt to make a super simple slicer for a beginner who's purchased a, a Prusa i3 3d printer although that may change in future. So this is the interface and first things first, you'll notice that it is gorgeous. So it has this lovely uh, 3D model of the print surface with a lovely overlay with the grid. It looks very much like the print surface on the actual Prusa i3 Mark II. There you go, even got an underside grid there. And it's very, uh, very light, it feels quite nice to use. So the idea of this engine is to make slicing easy for newcomers. So let's grab a file that's going to be usually quite difficult for a, a newcomer to 3D printing. Let's grab this file. Right, you'll notice it, it dropped it in straight away, so it's pretty quick in terms of loading uh, STL files in. So this is the Flutterbat from My Little Pony that I designed, well didn't design it, but I got it from a 3D pony generator and I showed a process of turning it into a STL file for 3D printing quite some time ago. You can check the card out there if you're interested. But this is a very hard 3D print, very difficult. There's a few reasons. One is there's these underside points. Usually slices struggle with those sort of things. Uh, there's lots of small details. It's going to need support material. It's going to need all sorts of things. So first cool thing I noticed with this software uh, is that it noticed it popped up a warning here saying scene is hard to print without support. So notice that this does have severe overhangs and areas that would fail. And for better adhesion, turn brim perimeter on. So, this slicer doesn't have many options to change. So it's trying to make it as easy to use for the user, but it's doing lots of clever things in the background. So let's have a look at printer settings. Material. So what Joseph has done, or Joseph's team, is that he's loaded in all the materials that he, you know a normal person would want to print with. So generic PLAs, all this sort of thing. So Prusa PLA, generic, uh, this and that. Let's just go with Prusa PLA for now. Uh, quality, so you've got different details. I normally print at 0.2. I rarely print anything lower than that because I'm very impatient. Anything lo less than 0.2 tends to take too long for me. Uh, and then you've got support on or off. So I'm going to say everywhere for support and it suggested a brim. So I'm going to turn brim on as well because it said better adhesion use a brim. And that warning goes away because we've turned support on and brim on. So you'll notice initially there's no temperature settings, there's no speed settings, there's nothing. Everything's hidden. So it's designed for a beginner, but as a power user you may find it limiting that you can't easily access those features. You can access them, but only through a bit of script that I'll show you at the end. What about manipulation? So you click the object, it goes orange of course, because the Prusa orange. And you have various ways you can change it. So rotation, you can just increase it in one degree increments like that or just um, enter a number like 90 for example and uh, 0 will always be the original way it, it was imported you can also use this freeform rotational tool to rotate the model around its axis as well as scale freeform you can copy paste your models as well with control C control V and finally there's the auto arrange tool which will move the models into position on the print bed so they're not touching each other with very minimal effort Something that seems to be a little bit buggy at the moment is the ability to push models into the print surface to print where they start at the zero Z height. This is something you could do in uh, Slicer quite easily, but for example here, if I turn place on bed off and then lower it into the print surface, the object warning object flutter is out of the printable area and the generate turns off but sometimes it doesn't turn off and you can slice it. Not sure what causes it to work sometimes and not work other times, but the software is still in beta, so that's fair enough. All right, so I've got everything set to what it recommended. I'm gonna hit generate. So this is the slicing speed on the 64-bit 64 64 computer. 
Um, and it's saying 95%. So it's not razor fast, not super fast, but that was pretty good. That wasn't too bad. Uh, the up slice is certainly a lot slower than that. So one thing I would like to see different here is the G-code preview. So G-code preview lets you scroll up in the layers of the print like so, like that. And you can see where the green is, that's where support material is. Uh, it's showing the orange as the outline of the print. But it's it's very glitchy as you can see. So yeah, you got orange for outline and then sort of like a yellow for the infill. I suppose, but see, it's 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 very kind of glitchy, like that. Um, what I would like to see is the ability to see all the G code at once, which I think you might be able to do if you import. I will try that at the end of this, but for now, um, you can't. You can only see one layer at a time. But what you can do here is you can implement color changes. So, for example, say as we got up to the head here, maybe at this point here, we wanted to change color. You can implement that by hitting the plus. And that's now a color change point. So that's going to implement the uh, the actual G code. I think it's M600 off the top of my head to color change or color swap in the G code for the Prusa i3 Mark II. So that's just going to be easy. It's an easy way to put color changes in to your model. And one thing before we save is one awesome thing. There's now a print time estimate and material use estimate. So estimated time, 3 hours and 11 minutes and filament use 6.8 meters. Um, I prefer to work in grams. I'm not sure if that's easy to change. Let's have a look. Settings. Friction control settings. Uh, no. So currently you can't change that, but in future I'm sure you can. All right. So let's go to save G code and let's just save it off. I'm going to dump it into my folder. So let's just see if I can import that G code and if it looks any different. So let's just uh, bring that in. Clear scene and load G-code file. Yes. So it's reading the G-code. And no, unfortunately, it still views it the same way in layers. So I would definitely like to see that viewed in a way that we can see where all the supports would be. Anyway, let's send this to the printer and see how it fares. And this is the result. So this is our little pony done in the reform uh, PLA, recycled PLA that was sent to me by Form Futura. And breaking the supports off was super easy. I did it all mostly by hand, maybe with a little bit of side cutters for some of them. Uh, but I was really amazed by the fact that it supported the underside points. Like, you know, little points there and, you know, there on the edge of the hair and here. It's all fine. And this is a small scale. It's not very big at 0.2 millimeters is not easy to do. And this was with no manual support. So let's talk about the limitations of Prusa control. It's for, it's for beginners. You're not gonna be able to tweak temperatures and speeds and settings easily at all. Um, and there's no manual support or multiple processes. So it's not gonna really gonna come up against something like Simplify 3D in terms of super hands-on. But for a beginner, I think this is one of the most promising bits of software I've seen for a long time in terms of just hitting print and getting something that works off a machine. But currently it is only made for the Prusa i3 Mark II. I'm sure you could send the G-code to something else, but it's not going to be tuned for that other printer. So let's dive in. So this, this is the data files for Prusa Control. And if we go into data, we have these JSON and uh, QSS spreadsheets. So cell sheets. So let's go into... Uh, for example, materials, right click, and I edit with Notepad++. So what we've got here is a list of what the settings are for each of the presets. So we got, you know, ultra detail, that's what ultra detail entails. Uh, detail, optimal, uh, you know, normal, draft, and I'm sure, I'm not much of a coder, but it looks like a pretty simple case of copy pasting and changing parameters to alter these sort of things. Then there's the printer uh, .json file. So basically, again, you can see here that it's got the, uh, you know, Prusa Mark II label, and it's referencing the OBJ. You could change the OBJ that shows up in the model. 
in the in the software you can change where the texture is that it overlays onto it which is something i've been playing with um, and then you can go through all the different parameters of that printer so you know different start g code uh it's even got g code flavors so it's all based off the same stuff you'll be familiar with using slicer it's just wrapped in its own package to make it easy for beginners. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video on Prusa Control interesting and useful. The download link is in the description. Uh, and full disclosure, Joseph has not paid me a cent to talk about this. I just thought it was a pretty neat bit of software for newcomers who are looking to get into 3D printing without the... I, look, it is intimidating using some of these slicing engines. So without the scary aspect of a UI you can't understand, this is as close to hit print and go on a, uh, go away, whatever that is, on an i3 style machine that I've seen pretty much ever. So definitely give it a go if you've got a Prusa machine and definitely keep an eye out if you've got something similar because I'm sure it's only a matter of time before the community starts modifying the software to do all sorts of things. If you enjoyed this video on Make This Music, guys, want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a huge amount, and I'd love to have you on board. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing, guys. Bye.